Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that one shot Welcome back to Wind Tunnel TV. Tonight it's the North South Racing League, and we've got the Peach State Classic here down in Georgia in the Lanier 150, I believe. But we'll have to check in on those laps momentarily. I'm Dean Set, joined as always by Mr. Colin J. Kennedy and Mr. Jason Martin. Colin, the Peach State Classic. My God, I want to eat a peach right now. Yeah, the Peach State, wonderful state of Georgia, um, home of the Atlanta Braves. Also, Road America is right across the street from this track. Um, but we're back here with the North-South Racing League. Always a great league to watch. Always entertaining. Always a little bit of some bumping and banging, which I think we'll see a little bit today uh, with this short track. You know, very uh, very short straightaways, very tight turns. So I think we'll see a little bit of bumping moving out of the way tonight. Yeah, should be interesting. I look forward to a, a little contact perhaps out here. Jason, we look in on the race info here. It pulls up. Um, what do you think about Lanier here? Well, Lanier is a great little short track, Dean. It's a 3 8 mile flat track. A little bit of banking, but not much. And uh, it's looking to be a good time. Nice little bull ring for these guys to knock each other around for a little bit. Absolutely. The bull ring. I love it. A little bit of fighting out here. A little matador action, perhaps. As we try and get our race info up here for you folks. And there you see it there. And you know what I find interesting, Colin, when you look at a track like this, these trap ma track maps are cool because you can see no two corners are built the same. Oh, absolutely not. And on track, these feel like two different corners, too. I mean, one up, the first one and two. Um, feel a little bit less banked than it is in three and four. So uh, you definitely got to be careful getting into the corner in one and two. I've seen a lot of spins going into one where people just overshoot it. Um, so got to be easy on the break, get it rotated and get it off that corner. And just got to watch out for who's around you also, because a lot of people can make that dive bomb and it will spin you out. Nice, nice. So we look in on our point standings here. After nine races here, it's Brian Hacker out front, Fortan in second, Johnson third, Austin Gable, Martin Huntoon, Smith, Shepard, and Cook in your top ten. And I don't know, Jason, I mean, Brian Hacker has been so good lately and always. I mean, uh, can anybody beat this guy here tonight? I don't know, uh, Dean. I mean, he's coming off a win from last week, I believe, and uh, it'd be interesting to see. I know he's got quite a few wins this year. Absolutely, he does. I mean, uh, Colin, you look at the guys like Fortan and Johnson. I mean, these are no slouches here. I mean, wh what do they got to do? I mean, we keep seeing Hacker get up here and late in the race, you know, 10 to go, and he's stalking you. I mean, what a terrible feeling it is to see you behind him because he always seems to be able to make the pass in a car not built for passing. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, Brian Hacker consistently. I mean, it's hard to be consistently number one, and, I mean, you've seen it throughout this whole entire season. He's just so uh, consistent. Um, I think there's a good, uh, there's a good chance for uh, Gillamy and for Ryan tonight. Uh, he's going he's gonna to be starting dead last, Brian Hacker is, because of the EOL. And this is a hard passing track. It's not easy to get around everybody. We have a pretty stacked field, pretty big field. So it's not going to be easy. You're going to wear those tires out trying to get back to the front. So really just Gilliam and Ryan just really need to stay up front and save their stuff so that they can have a better car to defend against Brian Hacker because you know that he will be there by the end of the race. Yeah. Somehow, some way, he'll make his way up to the front. There's no doubt about it. We see out on the track right now. Fortan is out there. I think that's Keeler. Yes, it is right behind him in that 08. Love the look of that machine. And, you know, uh, Jason, you look at some of these cars and these paint jobs, you know, people put a lot of work into these things. Yeah, they sure do. I know that myself, Dean. I put some work in this week on some new paint jobs, and uh, there's a lot of good looking cars out there. And we're looking forward to seeing them shine the lights tonight for sure. Absolutely. 
game on Mathis. There's Shepard out here. And of course, this great race brought to you by RC2 Promotions, an iRacing event, a special event organizer that can help manage your special events. They offer quality consulting, event planning, promotion, and full service event management for very competitive prices. It's great to see these sponsors take part in the iRacing. They're what makes our whole world go round out here. Looks like we've got everybody in here, so we welcome Sam Maxwell into the booth. How are we doing tonight, Sam? I'm doing great, guys. How y'all doing? Looking forward to a nice tight battle at Lanier. You bet, man. I love it. We're down here. The Peach State Classic. How about that? It's awesome. I love this track. Absolutely so do I. Well, let's get into our redraw. Of course, our top eight qualifiers will come in here and randomly draw to see who gets the poll tonight. Who's going to be lucky? Who's our first contestant, Sam? On the poll, the 46 of Philip Martin. Philip Martin showing some speed. How we doing, Philip? I mean, you've been up here. You've got a win under your belt now. Now you've got a poll that doesn't really count because the top redraw or the redraw here, but it has to feel good nonetheless. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, that's the first poll of the season for me. So that's awesome, man. That's a great job. Now, how are you feeling about living near tonight? Uh, as long as I don't kill the right front, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, that's pretty much a standard. Any chance of the high side working tonight? Ah, uh, we were talking about it that earlier. I think uh, I think it'll come in. It, I know it did at Oxford, uh, another league race I ran last week. It did, so we'll see. Hopefully, it widens out. All right. Well, board's all yours because you're on the pole, Philip. Give us a number. Uh, give me six. Number six. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, six will get you six tonight, Philip. All right. That'll work. All right. Best of luck to you. Thanks, guys. All right, Sam. Who's up? Next up, we have the 13, Goulamay Fortin. Goulamay Fortin. How we doing, Goulamay? Pretty good. I like this track, so hopefully we'll get a good result. Well, you like them, you love them. You always seem to get a good result, so we expect nothing else out of you. Now, what about the championship? Are we starting to think, like, time's running down here? We got to get something done? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully tonight I can gain, I can gain some points. I know Iker starting at the back because of his win last week, so hopefully we can gain some points tonight and I have a chance at, for the last three races. Uh, you think about putting a bumper to him or something, Gilmer? I don't think. I tried to do it to Dante this year and didn't work, so <laughs> I'll, I'll stay clean. <laughs> All right. Ten, four. All right. Board. Anything but six on the board for you? I'll take number three. Yeah. I mean, shocking development. Number three pick. Let's see who we got. Man, that's third. So six is six. Three is three. That might tell you something, folks. I don't know. Best of luck to you, Guillaume. Thank you. All right. Who we got, Sam? Next up, guys, we have the 47 of Rondy, Rodney Hunton. Rodney Hunton. How are we doing tonight, sir? Uh, doing okay. All right, man. Up here, qualifying third. Got a little speed tonight. You liking Lanier? Yeah, this fun little short track. Um, always seem to run well here. What's the key to getting around here, Rodney? I mean, you like the place. I mean, it was, I know it's the bottom, but any, any tricks you want to divulge? You rolling it? You two footing it? Uh, just turn the wheel left. Okay, there's your tip, folks. Turn left. That's the best way around this track. I like it. Don't want to give nothing away, eh, Rodney? I mean, when you get an advantage, you got to keep it, don't you? Yeah, I'll get all I can get. You betcha, man. All right, anything but three or six on the board. Well, let's take another odd number. We'll take number one. Hey, three has been three. Six has been six. Let's have one. See what's going on here. The long reveal on this one. And how about that? It stays consistent. One is one. You grab the pole. You got to be loving that. I'll take it. Okay, Rodney. You got the, you got the best spot out there. Go get him, man. Go get you a victory tonight. All right, thank you. All right, Sam, who's up? Guys, we have the 15. Matt Cook is our next qualifier. 
Matt Cook, the number 15, had some, you know, not some great luck uh, uh, in parts of the season, Matt, but you got the speed. Are you feeling lucky tonight? Uh, I don't know if I'm feeling lucky, but I'm just, uh, I'm excited to get this race going. And I'm really kind of wondering, are these, are, are these numbers we're coming up with, are they really random? Because it doesn't seem like it tonight. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like it tonight, but I mean, I'm just giving them, I don't place them. So uh, as far as I know, they're all random, but you know, I got to say, uh, the way it's been going, I think your choice is clear here. Well, you would think that, uh, but I kind of want to start on the inside. So I think I'm going to take number five. Oh, I like it. A little strategy call here. You know, a little something different. This, and look at that. It's fifth. I mean, do we have to even finish this board, folks? I don't think we do. I think we know what's happening here. But, That's hey, awesome. I love the strategy call. So you're telling me the inside is that important tonight? I think for sure on the start, and then we'll, we'll see what happens from there. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that during the choo choose rule. Good luck to you, Rodney. Thank you. All right. Who's up? Or Matt, sorry, Matt. <laughs> My bad. Next up, the 21, Jeff Bergner. Bergner? Bergner, yeah. You got it. <laughs> I mean, don't do not do that to me before I have to say it. Jeff Bergner, how are you doing, Jeff? Uh, it's all good, and it is Bergner. Bergner. Oh, Sam had it right, yep. Well, well you know, like, I, I, hey, when someone else says it, I, I get twisted now. But anyway, Jeff, you're up here. You're having a good run. You're in fifth, you know, unofficially here. You got the draw. How are you feeling about the track? Uh, this track's always been fun. I haven't had many laps on it. So, yeah. and I'm with Matt. I'll stay to the other side. Let's take number seven. All right. Right to business. I like it. As we wait for the reveal here. How are you feeling about the car, Jeff? How's the setup? I, I've only had about five laps. That's about it, so I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, seven and seven. I mean, like I said, it's been pretty clear here so far tonight on this draw. So it does not not looking too random. I think I know how the order of picking is going to go from here on in, but you'll be starting seventh. Best of luck to you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right, you too. Sam, who's up? Next up, we have the 0-3 Dante Curtis. Dante Curtis, the Murphy Missile, they call him. How are we doing tonight, Dante? Doing good, guys, doing good. All right, sir. Well, you've been up here, led a ton of laps. Is it victory lane tonight? I, I sure hope so. Uh, hopefully we get us one uh, close to home tonight, and, and uh, we can start at the back next week. I like that. Hey, you know, looking forward to starting at the back. You got to win to do that. I like that call for sure. You know, I started to ask about the setup. How does the car feel? Uh, it's, it's, it's got all kinds of grip in it. Uh, it's just light mall stock. It's, it's gripped up. Yes, sir. We're, we're hearing those cars chipping out in there. So you're going to be riding that rev limiter tonight, aren't you? Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, you've seen what's been going on. You got two, four, or eight. I'd say, like, take your random pick, but it's more like, where would you like to start tonight? Yeah, I think I think we'll take the two. All right, two. It is a little outside lane here on the choose rule, and you're Thank gonna you. slide all the way around. I would imagine straight up to second. Look at this. What is going on tonight? Okay. Hey, second's great. Go get them, man. Strange. We'll take it. Thanks, guys. All right, Sam. Who we got? Next up, the 31 of Justin Grosser. Justin Grosser up here in the top eight. Nice uh, nice trip around Lanier tonight for you. Are you happy to be up here in the top eight? Yeah, I mean, back every practice time and uh, lay one down in the top eight here. That's uh, it's always, always good, always fun, uh, always good when you can take some time off and come back and still make the top eight redraw. That's kind of my only goal coming in is like just getting a redraw. So well, here we are. And track time's important, isn't it, Justin? I mean, when you can't get it, it's it's hard to come in and be fast. So, you know, you coming back with some time off here, pretty impressive. Are you feeling like you can do something in the race tonight? Yeah, I don't know. For me, the key's going to be getting off strategy, whether that's uh, trying to short pit some people on an earlier caution and then kind of baby my stuff until I can get some track position when they all pit or whether that's save a set for the end. I don't really know, but uh, I'm not going to be able to beat these guys straight up. So for me, not in points racing, uh, I'm kind of going to kind of be looking to get off strategy and see if we can't make some magic happen. Hey, there's always the chrome horn when in doubt, Justin. 
anyway. I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to come in here and upset anybody. Ah, uh, we're, we're here with uh, being part time. It's just uh, ain't worth it. So we're just making jokes in the booth, trying to entertain here. Fourth or eighth, I'd say. You know, that's what you got. Like, I mean, it's been uh, one to one on these numbers. So where well, do you, you want know, to start? I really love Tiny Horse, and I'd love to help him out, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take the four. Yeah, and fourth it is. So you'll you'll hand eighth to Tiny Horse, and uh, I like it. You know, feelings, Tiny Horse. I love you, brother. (laughs) All right, man. Good luck, Justin. Thanks, guys. All right, that brings Ryan Tiny Horse Johnson. Unfortunately, uh, we know where you're starting tonight, uh, Ryan. How you feeling about being back in eighth? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm already a row ahead of where I thought. I didn't think I'd even be in the redraw tonight. So Is that right? Uh, You're not feeling it here tonight? No, nah, I, I don't know what it is with these cars. Like, I haven't figured out qualifying. Um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect Justin to hand me anything. I mean, we're <laughs> racers. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Absolutely, you will. So you'd be on the outside and in traffic. Are you thinking maybe the outside can work for you? I I don't think it will at the start, but uh, I'm interested to see if we get a little dynamic track later in the race. Maybe it'll come in, but we'll see. All right. Go get him, brother. Appreciate it. All right. All right, Sam. Thank you very much. It's Sam Maxwell and the boys here tonight for the Peach State Classic. Colin. But we're ready to get rolling here. Boys got to shuffle around after that dynamic uh, redraw where nobody knew what was coming. I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened with that. Yeah, interesting redraw here. But um, these boys will figure it out. They'll settle it out. And we'll be back to uh, rolling here before long. So um, I, I hate it for some of the guys that qualified up front. But, you know, that's part of the redraw. Uh, I think, honestly, it added a little bit of spice to it. They got to really pick where they wanted to be. So... Yeah, it's um, just an early choose rule, right? Yeah, exactly. So, honestly, I think it's going to... You're going to see a couple of these guys actually try to take the outside and maybe gain some position. So, um, like, I like where Dante Curtis said that he wanted to take that outside on second. Might as well take it, you know? See if you can't get that little gap on the inside, so... Oh, most definitely. No doubt about it. Pace car out there pacing these boys around. Jason, we're about to get started. How you feeling about this one? Feeling good, Dan. Looks like it's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And uh, these guys always put on a good show, and I'm sure the fans are going to enjoy it. We're going to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look throughout this field, because some of the guys not in the redraw, you know, you got Al Smith, Austin, Gary Eschen, Womack, Keeler, Gavel. I mean, this is a stacked field. Nichols back there. You know, I don't want to skip anybody, but we're skipping down to the bottom where Brian Hacker is. Watch out for him. Now it's hunting up here. Going to lead him down. Wow, and a great start by the Murphy Missile on the outside. But, wow, he's surging up there, but can't quite get down in there anywhere. Gillen A14 fills that hole. Yeah, the outside's not going to look too pretty right here off the start more than likely. I mean, you're going to see a little bit of battling, which Dante's probably got to figure it out a little bit. You know, a lot of these guys have not tried this high side. In practice, they were all running the bottom, just, you know, filling out the car. So a um, little bit of a learning lesson here for Dante to see if he wants to pick the outside again. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see, right? If he, if he finds a hole somewhere, it'll be a net gain. And here it is. He's going to filter in right here. So not too bad. He falls back to fourth. Now you got Philip Martin up on the high side. Philip Martin was the fastest out for actual qualifying. And he is stuck on that high side. He has got to beat Cook down into this corner. Yeah, and he's actually surging ahead a little bit of the 15 here. Maybe a little bit of patience coming out of Matt Cook right now, knowing that, you know, um, that Philip Martin is faster than him, so he's just going to let him in. But overall, I mean, he was rolling that high side, making it look smooth, really not getting loose or anything. So maybe that high side will come in a little bit later on uh, in the runs, or maybe more people will gamble and try to take that high side on restarts. You see the silver surfer, Bergener there. He is up in seventh. Eschen underneath of Travis Hoffler. Battle for eighth here. But you can already see, Jason, a single groove track right here now when you got a single groove track and you're not in first i mean what do you do with the guy in front of you 
Well, you do the best you can, Dean. And this, this track is interestingly banked. It's got like an 11 degree or eight banking to it. But the curve down below there has a little uh, offset bank to it. So if you watch Gillum right there, he's putting that left tire on that offset banking, helping him hook the car around the corner. It's pretty good. It looks like it's working for him to hold his position. Let's see if we can get an onboard camera with him here and just see. And you're right, he is down there low, Colin. Is this something that you can do with these late models? Yes, absolutely. It does make the car look a little bit better, as you see him. He's look tight and trying to take a peek to the inside here. Um, but this track is really just like a non-stop corner. Um, you really don't have any time to hold the wheel straight, so... Uh, de-wedging that car a little bit really does help it get off the corner so you can get that run. You, you'll see a lot of them try to pass with that. As you see, the 47 kind of washed up a little bit right there off the corner. Um, Guillaume really, it seems like he's very aggressive right now, kind of wants that lead early just to go ahead and start building that gap. He does. I mean, he, he, I wouldn't say he's being aggressive, but he's doing something I like to do. He's peeking that nose in there, and he's trying to make uh, Rodney a little bit loose here. Or not loose, but think about him, right, and possibly force a mistake on him. Uh, I really love to do that. And stalk people, go underneath them, go to the high side, really fill their mirror up. Is, is that a good tactic, at all, Colin? Yeah, absolutely. Caution and on the track. Not sure where it is, but Ryan Johnson being shown a lap down already. So something happened with Johnson Ooh. early. And we yeah, got looks Sus. Like, uh, Dean, looks like Ryan Johnson got into the back of the number four, Josh Sus there. Just looks like uh, Josh slowed down a little, just a little too much and Ryan got into him. Yeah, that, that's just a little a little too much aggression too early there, I think. Sus trying to just roll around the back, and I think Johnson... Uh, and not, not accustomed to the back at all, Colin. Yeah, no, definitely not. And that was just a little bit of a racing incident also. Uh, you know, fighting for the same amount of real estate, he was probably just trying to come down a little bit out of the corner, get a run on that straightaway. And, you know, there's a car there. It's not easy to really know exactly where they're at. So uh, just a little bit of a racing incident. Nothing, no harm, no foul. I mean, we might have a couple cars lap down, but I think they'll be able to get it back here before long. All right. So it's hunting, Fortin, Grocer. Curtis, Martin, Cook, Bergener, Eschen, Austin, Womack in your top 10. We're going to have the choose rule here, so this will be interesting. And I think you're going to see, Jason, a whole slew of people choosing down low. Now, how far back before you say, hey, I'll take that high side? I'd say probably about 6th or 7th. The guy's not going to have any problem jumping up there. Uh, getting to the high side, just hoping that after second or third, he might be able to squeeze in somewhere, gain some free spots. Yeah, I mean, you can squeeze in. Heck, a caution, come out in one lap, and you've gained uh, four or five spots. So I like that. It'd probably be, I think it probably might be a little earlier than that, just because guys, you know, they, they can't resist the temptation, Colin. Hang on. We're not oh, yeah, no doubt. And um, I think that, honestly, this, this choose rule really does – separate this league from a lot of leagues you don't really see this very often in any in any type of league and it just separates really the ones that are trying to gain positions and the ones that are trying to maintain them so um, I think it adds this interesting dynamic to it and honestly I think it's just a really good concept as you see Dante Curtis take the outside again I think that honestly they're trying to learn right now a lot of these guys are just trying to see if they're comfortable up there if they can make up time there or not it's just a learn. It's just them learning right now. They know it's early in the race, and I know this race will go by quick. But the more they know, the more they can use it later on. Yeah, it's interesting. Both Curtis and Martin go back up there. You see Gary Eschen up there on the high side, along with Hoffler as well. So we'll see how this works out for these guys. We're back under green flag racing. Great start from Rodney Fortin underneath the Curtis. Curtis gonna find a hole. Ken Martin. He's got the 31, a grocery right there on him. Wow, Martin rocks the high side. That was a good turn there. Yeah, a little surprising. Looks like he had the opportunity to come down and turn two, Martin did, but he didn't choose to do it. He kind of stayed up there, but he's still hanging strong out there on the outside of Justin Costner. 
Yeah, he's loving four here. You see him in the middle of like three and four, and he just surges ahead a couple of car lengths. I mean, he has found something. He drives right around the outside of Justin Grosser. Yeah, and, yeah. and Philip Martin's doing something that I kind of like to do. It's pinch him off the corner. When you pinch him off the corner, it's hard for them to not make a mistake and almost hit into you. It makes them check up sometimes. And um, you can get that. You can fi Instead of finding that gap, you can make it. So, Ooh, uh, and that's what Eshin just did. He made it with a little bump to exactly. cook in the inside. Because you can make that gap. Sometimes it might be the ni it might not be the nicest way, but you can make you can make that gap. That reminded me of old hockey there. That was a good old fashioned hip check right there. And Hoffler back on the high side again. He's <laughs> two runs in a row where he's on the high side. He might actually like that high side a little bit. You know, um, he doesn't seem like he's losing too much time up there. Yeah. I mean, yes, he's. He started. He started bit, that restart fourth on the outside, Colin, oh, and and now he's yeah, he's got a whole train under him. He needs a home badly. This is like an orphan out here. Yeah, farther back in the field, the real guy that's getting hurt on this last restart is Adam Gable. He's lost almost ten positions, and they're wrecking. And the Gable involved in that wreck. So as soon as he said his name, and I see that something was happening with him. Let's get a look in on it here. So Gable, now I'm not sure who that is underneath him there. That's Mathis in the six. So Math, wow, that's, that's strong right there. Uh, you know, in these replays, just to be clear, it's you can never really tell because you don't know if the guy in front was really slowing down dramatically or the guy underneath was driving in that hard. But that looked a little aggressive here, lap 30, 125. So we'll yeah, do it. Sure. I'm sure Adam Gable is not happy about that. Like I said, on that last restart, he lost 10 positions, 11 positions, and then it was just two guys aiming for the same point well, on the racetrack. What will that do together. to you, Jason? You, you're riding around out here. Uh, you choose up. You move up a little bit, maybe pick up four or five spots on the restart. Now you're stuck up, and you're getting freight trained. I mean, can it really throw you off, or what, what happens to you? Oh, yeah, it can be really frustrating, and, and you're just trying to get low, trying to get down low, and then when he had the opportunity, he went low, and he was not clear, unfortunately. See Sus getting a lucky dog here, so Sus will be back on the lead lap. I think Mathis is on the lead lap. No, he'll be a lap down. Ryan Johnson will be a lap down, so this guy is still searching and still looking here for a way to get back in this thing. Look in on Hacker. Now, Hacker's done mo mostly nothing so far. I mean, he hasn't had any green flag laps. He got Nichols right in front of him. They're back in 15th and 16th right now. Yeah, Brian's down 10 spots also. I'm not sure if he might have got hooked on the outside and hung out there for quite a bit. Well, he's actually not. Yeah, Brian was EOL to the back of the field for winning last week, so That's right. the scoring would be incorrect on that one. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, no, no, no it happens. A hacker, a heck of a driver, and won a, a thrilling event last week. It was a hard event, and it looks like there, there's some hard racing going on again. So these guys, you know, are real competitive out here, Colin. And you run a lot of late models. I mean, uh, you have to get accustomed to some cautions out here. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And you got to be accustomed to how fast these races go. But you have these short tracks that go by in a blink of an eye. You don't have a lot of time. So when you have these costumes, it just makes it a little bit longer and it makes it even more tough. Yeah, and it makes the aggression go up because you realize you got a short amount of time to get your spots. Rodney Hunting out there taking the good restart again on the outside. That's Dante Curtis. Again, he falls right in line. So he's got to be loving this. Martin falls into fourth. Eshin back there fighting for fifth on the high side. That's Grosser. So Grosser... He can drive, man. He's just not out here that often, so he's a tough customer, but so is Eshin. Cook back here in seventh, trying to fend off the likes of Bergener, and it uh, looks like the 14 right behind him, a Womack. Austin up there as well with that Austin paints machine. Yeah, and you see um, the Silver oh, Surfer right now. Oh, yeah, they've been having contact these past couple laps. 
but the Silver Surfer is pinching that 15 down, so it's hurting that momentum off of that 15. That's the reason why you're seeing them surge ahead a little bit. If you can get that high side right where you can pinch them off and hurt that exit speed, you can make that pass and make that gap. As you see Bergener just slowly working towards it, I think he's going to be able to, yeah, he's going to clear him right off of turn two here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about learning how to pinch them down and make that gap because you're obviously already hurting the speed of them being on their outside, so... Um, well, and you just, just see him there, Colin. You've seen Womack kind of get loose trying to p power off on the bottom. That can happen too, right? Yeah, no doubt, because you don't want to wash up into that car on the outside, and tucking it down low is just going to upset it even more. So um, when you upset it, then it just slows you down more, and that five can just use his momentum that he's getting off that high side and pass you, So, which is going to be kind of hard with this pass because that 15 stuck right in front of him, so he's really got nowhere to go here. Trusting that guy down low. Yeah, a lot of trust out on the track, Jason. I mean, you ride around these guys. I mean, you, you got to get... Oh, and Cook's around. Oh, yeah. And Womack Man, pushes awesome. through him. I think Cook just got loose there, it looked like. But we'll have a look at it and see what happened. So, Fortin, while well, although it was happening at some point, Fortin has gotten the lead. See here, Cook, and he just gets down a little low, and around she goes. Womack gets through. But Huntoon had lost a lead somewhere along the way here. I'm going to try and see if we can find where, where all that happened. This is probably a little later here. He's already, well, there you go, 410. Wow, 410 almost, he's so low that car was almost sideways in the corner. So Hunting gets thrown up to the high side here. And it's this freight train from there. I mean, you see the line of cars. I mean, there's just not a lot you can do. And you got to regroup mentally from getting passed for the lead. So Rodney going to be upset about this. Currently shown in seventh position here. But Gillum A410, he's doing what he needs to do. We got a championship battle. Our leader, Brian Hacker, has moved up to 12th. So watch out. Hacker making moves, whether it's in the choose rule or out on the track. He's starting to come forward. Yeah, it looks like Brian the Hatchet Hacker is slowly making his way up through the field. And uh, there's still a lot of racing left to go, so it'll be interesting to see if he can make it up there. Yeah, and it's 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 like uh, me and Dean talk about. Um, it's always right there at halfway when you start seeing Hacker start knocking on the door, and where you're starting to see him out of nowhere just start coming through the field so quickly. And it's it's every track, even the ones that are hard to pass on, he finds a way to you know maybe utilizing the choose rule and whatnot and finding holes, finding gaps and. Being a little aggressive, but not too aggressive. It's 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 each week. It's really impressive to see how well he can come through the field, even whenever it's hard to pass. It's like Hunton took advantage of that choose rule from the seventh position, got himself up there starting in the second row. Mm -hmm. But he's happy to be up there. Oh no, I'm thinking of the wrong guy as I was. I'm making the wrong calls here. All night, yeah, that's so. you're fine. That's grosser there. Hunton stays on the bottom. He's a little whiter there with the orange number. Back in ninth position, so very interesting. Always is there. And a great start here. Wow, Fortin launches. He is down and away. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of early jumps from these guys just so they can really get the power down before these guys have the chance to. Um, and so it pulls that, that top side in. So that top side can really come down on to third place and you know hold his position. Um, but it also stacks up the field a little bit in the back because some of the guys aren't ready for it. So that's the reason why you're starting to see a lot of side-by-side -side racing on these. Big battle back here for fourth position. Eshin and Grosser just going at it. Eshin rolls the bottom, but on the high side, the 31, strong coming back. Bergener right in there. Yeah, Grosser's doing an amazing job on the high side. You know, you're not really seeing oh, a lot of these contact. guys prevail just because of speed it's a lot of them being pinched down but he's oh, oh, around 
And he is Ooh. not good. Someone check on him. Holy smokes, folks. He hit that barrier, reminding me of Michael Waltrip back in the day. Holy cow, that was a rough ride. You know, the Olympics are this year. Um, maybe he wants to try out for the gymnastics. I mean, team. that was the triple Lundy if I ever seen it. <laughs> here we go. Let's have a look at Bergener here. Yeah. <laughs> then he gets flipped and bam, right into that barrier. I mean, someone would have died. Thank God we're sim racing. Wow. And that, that was really just a result of um, fighting for the same amount of real estate. That's, that's, a, that's a tough one to call for, uh, you know, both fighting for every inch. And sometimes you're going to see that in this type of racing. Well, the way I find short tracks, and in, in particular in the late model, is you, you almost got one shot at a good, clean race. And that's right off the beginning. You know, guys are willing to give a little bit. You get out there, you get about 30, 40, 50 laps in, you're liable to go green. But once cautions begin, and the later the cautions are, the more amped up everybody gets. You need to go. You need to get a spot, and it's hard to pass. So it's probably not going to get any cleaner from here on in. Oh yeah, no doubt. And you know that's another reason why the um, why, why they're so aggressive right now. They know they don't have a lot of time. When they had these short restarts, where short green flag runs, where it's just caution to caution. They know it's the only time to make up positions. So they're aggressive, making these moves that you would probably think you would see with about thirty to go. And so it just causes a little bit more carnage. Hoffler goes to the high side. Hacker goes to the high side. Looks like Schumann's up there. So some of our big movers, you got Nichols here in the 69 machine. He's up into eighth on the high side. Shepard's up nine spots. He's in seventh. Eschen and Hoffler look like they picked up six. Schumann back in 14th up eight spots. So some big movers. But it's Guillaume Fortin out front looking to close in on this uh, points lead from Hacker, who is currently back in 10th. Let's see if Curtis can get a better jump here. And he does. A good jump by him. Philip Martin on the inside, slowly working his way back up to the front. Grocer is still rocking this car. I mean, he looks strong in that Celsius machine. A beautiful car, too, and just doing a beautiful job on the outside here. Um, holding his own, not something easy to do around the track kind of like this. So um, hopefully he can find a hole right here between the 23 and the 46 of Philip Martin, but it doesn't seem like it, so he's going to have to be working hard for it. And he is working. I mean, anytime you can work around Eschen on the outside of him, you're doing something right. Now, he's not passing them, but he is hanging with them. My goodness. Hoffler on the outside, a little further back. Shepard looks like he's gotten on through and around. Austin is down on the bottom. Hacker's found a home on the bottom. So, this is getting interesting fast. Back up front, 410. Curtis, Martin, their single file. And then you got Eschen and Grocer still going at it. Yeah, great battle from both of them, you know, both willing to give them each other a little, a couple inches, you know, not too many inches, but a couple just to, just to have a little bit of some racing here, and, and I'm telling you, I, I did not expect Grocer to be able to hold on the outside of Eschen, especially on his first race back in a while. You know, I've seen this from him before, he can, there's something about his driving style that he can run the high side a lot better than most very good driver i think if he had some practice in he might be a uh, favorite here to get out here and win one of these things i think just he's past a halfway overall. just past halfway here now guys so at this point lap times are pretty much stable and all these guys are running really similar times who's your pick I mean, who's my pick? I mean, we're looking in on Brian Hacker right now. I don't know how you can't pick him. I don't care what place he's in right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I'll throw one out there for you. How about Eschen here? Who you got, Colin? I got I got Gillamay. I mean, you know, 
Bill May, he got his first win of the season, and you know he's looked strong through every single race. And it's not just the fact that he's in first; he's so consistent, and he's able to build that gap, good good restarts, and he's going to be a tough pass to make. And Brian Hacker has to use his tires to pass all these other people. I think Guillemet, even if Brian Hacker gets there, is going to be able to defend him enough to hold on to this thing. So I'm going to pick my old, a good old man, Guillemet. All right. Uh, Jason, we hop on board here with Guillemet 410. Now you see him down on the apron with the lefts helping that thing rotate. I mean, what, do you like what you're seeing? I mean, you must. He's, he's in first place. Absolutely do, and you get that left front down on that apron a little bit, puts more pressure on that right rear, give you a nice good drive off the corner. It looks like it's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, just solid, solid. Let's go back to the other guy we brought up, and that's Hacker. Now, he's in eighth, right behind Scott Austin, and you see, I mean, he's not quite getting as low as Guillaume is, and I find that interesting. It's something that uh, another broadcaster likes to talk about. That's sticking that headlight out. You know, and he's driving more in the tracks of Austin, Colin. Is that, I mean, does that affect you as he gets underneath him here a little bit? Um, a little bit. I mean, you really start to kind of figure out where you're faster than him at, and that's what, that's what Brian Hacker's probably trying to do. He's just trying to see where he's faster, where he can make his move and get by this guy. Um, and that's what's so good about Brian is he's he, he's like a hawk. He'll, he'll stare at you until he figures out where your where your weak spot is, and then he'll make his move before you can even react in time. So um, riding behind him, he's learning a lot too. It might hurt your tires just a little bit sitting behind him because you don't have that fresh air. But at this point, he's been behind it, just about everybody, so I don't think he's going to be hurt too bad. Oh, we got another crash back here, Cole. And caution will come out for it. Or so Johnson. the shark machine there, I mean, I don't know if it is the shark machine, but it's got the teeth on there and looking mean. But uh, and Ryan Johnson involved again. Can't catch a break tonight. I don't think all them teeth are uh, intact after that one. <laughs> no, sir. That's where they find him laying on the beach. Oh, and he gets into Cook, a little checkup, and around he goes. So a uh, true uh, short track incident there. The breaking point's very hard to see, and just a little misjudging, and you'll still do that checkup there. Looks like Hoffler coming in. So Hoffler comes in. Womack, Gable, Cook, Keeler. Oh, Nelly. I mean, we might have some uh, tires going on here, folks. Yeah, and it's kind of shocking because, you know, we didn't see much fall off from these tires. We were seeing, you know, about maybe maybe a tenth, sometimes not even a tenth, uh, off of their best lap tonight. And, you know, there's been a lot of cautions, so they haven't really had time to wear out their tires. But maybe it's a big strategy play knowing that, they, that the tires won't make it to the end. You see everybody's right side going up in the air, and that's it. They'll take right sides only. 410 out here leading, coming around. They're all going to get off pit road all right, so right sides. And now Grocer comes in. Now, this I dislike. I, I always dislike this. The second lap pit, if you didn't pit on the first lap, you are now putting yourself all the way behind the guys who did, along with the guys out on the track, and, and you see there, well, those are lap cars. Ryan Johnson's a lap down. So is Cole, I think. So those guys, you know, you can understand them coming in, but I don't understand why Grocer would come in here, Jason. No, I sure don't. It's, it's, you can't. And I see one or two of these guys change four tires, so I think that was a, a mental mistake on their area that's going to hurt them. Uh, put them a lap down. Well, they're going to get trapped on pit road. I don't know that that's a legal right. pit exit. I mean. Oh, yeah. Right. I see that, too. Yeah, that, that's going to give them a black flag. It should, anyway. It should. Uh, I don't know how that's uh, being okay there. Maybe maybe it's allowed. I'm not too sure. But nonetheless, a uh, mistake in my opinion. My opinion is, uh, you know. You can put it right in the trash if you'd like. It's no big deal. Fortin out front. Curtis, the Murphy missile on the outside. You got Martin and Shepard. How about Dustin Shepard? Up 12 spots here, Colin, and we're ready to go green. Or maybe yeah, we're not. Rolling. And, you know, Dustin Shepard, you know, he's that he's that short run guy. Um, he's like he's, gonna, he's a long run guy right now, but um, these cautions might be helping him out. 
Yeah, I mean, a slow start on the high side from Curtis. That's going to allow Martin to get to his inside. But wow, what a corner from the 03. Shepard followed him. So Shepard rocking the high side here, trying to get up to the outside of the 46. Yeah, shot out of a cannon off the of turn two. I mean, that was. That was the best thing for Dante Curtis to do right there. He needed to get down. That's good. That's a that's a tough pass to make on the high side. But when it's Philip Martin, it's even tougher. So, um, but as you see, uh, Dustin Shepard's still struggling to even get down on the bottom here. It's going to be a tough pass to get get by this five. And this is what happens. You can kind of see him almost getting a little ragged up there at times. You're just trying with all your might, maybe too hard even. I mean, but he, he's making it work. He got down. So good for the 89. Whoa, great drive in there. Here comes the two, Brian Hacker, now in sixth, looking for fifth, or no, looking for sixth. He takes it quickly away from the five of Austin, so watch out. We're getting down to Hacker time. The hatchet man on the move. You know, uh, Jason, oh, and we got Brian Nichols into the five of Scott Austin. He's around, no caution yet, and there it is. That's that's them guys on fresh tires, Dean, all fighting back there. Is what that was. I was watching, uh, I was watching Al Smith and Travis Hoffler back there, the first two cars on fresh tires, and they were they were going after it back there, trying to get position. Yeah, and that's exactly what happens. Fresh tires, wow, check up there, and that just caused that whole thing. But yeah, those you put those fresh tires towards the back, and and some good race car drivers, and. Uh, Boy, oh boy, they, they want to come to the front. Rodney Huntoon in. Math is in. Yeah, it's just them fresh tires build confidence. You start driving harder, and then uh, you're driving around guys who aren't getting off the corner as well on them older tires, and it just doesn't work out sometimes. Math is uh, pitting, and it looks like his pit crew in the middle of a conversation don't want anything to do with him. I think they turned their back on him, Colin. Yeah, I, I suppose so. Nichols comes in. What? Incarnation? Or no? I, I, I don't think pitting right here, I mean, is going to benefit a whole lot. You know, you see the laps, the laps left. We've got 32 to go here and not in a, in a big field to get around. Um, I think Nichols has disappeared. I, I, that's unfortunate. I think I that's a computer right. issue. Oh, unfortunate. But don't look now. Look who snuck in the top five during all this. I mean, it, I, it's, I, I, it, it's a constant. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes you just can't fathom how he does it because early in the race, last place, not even really doing anything. I mean, he, at first caution come out, he was probably picked up one spot or something. And then the next one, he picked up three. And the next one, he picked up four more. Then the next one, another five. I mean, it just gets progressively better for him all the time. Yeah, choose the inside on the restart. He's gonna be third on the inside line. That's you know, he's like a he's like a hatchet, uh, <laughs> Jason. You know, like a hatchet on a big tree. You just chopping, and chopping, and chopping, and then you start to get down towards that core and it just gets easier and easier yeah he just keeps working away at it chopping away at it brian the hacker brian hacker the hatchet chopping away at it up here in the top five all right so how about philip martin up here in second now he chose that high side he's gonna do battle with guillaume 410 does he have it time can he get a great launch the 13 Holds a little bit, dives down. 46, nice job up high. He'll file in. Back so here, the 20 of uh, Travis Hoffler is the first car on fresh tires, uh, putting putting the wood to it there on the outside. Yeah, I mean, great point there. Hoffler up into sixth position. He's got that rubber. Can he do something with it? I don't know. He's going to go low here. Shepard working that high side. And Hacker looking for fourth. Shepard, I think, caught the wall there. My goodness. And the 20th, Travis Hoffler, he's been running that out. Oh, we got another caution. Loverridge is around. Involved. So 
So Shane Lever, I mean, a mess of stuff going on here. This does not look That's, pretty. Looks like he uh, just avoiding contact there and lost control of his car. It's a good job by everybody avoiding any additional contact. Yeah, just a really, self self spin there. Really a pretty good job of him too. Trying to get a hold of that car, just just uh, <laughs> kept wobbling. Shepard comes in, so I'm really surprised by these pit stops. I got to tell you, folks, Dustin Shepard relinquishes a top five position with 25 to go. I mean, I don't understand, Colin. Is there any way in 25 laps, under 25 laps, you can make your way through this field? I mean. Maybe if you wreck everybody, I mean, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, that's about the only thing I think you know, of. But four it's, down it's, the middle, I'm coming three wide. I mean, yeah, I, it's, I don't, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough pass to really be able to uh, a lot of passes. And this late in the race, you know, these guys aren't willing to give an inch. They don't care if you're fast. They don't care if you're on new tires. They don't care about anything. They're just trying to get their best finish that they can. It's not gonna be easy passing everybody, especially with 24 laps to go. You can maybe salvage a top 10, but anything else is going to be really difficult and really hard to get there. Honestly, I think if you're pitting here, it's either you've wore out your stuff or you're just not confident in the car anymore. Now, Jason, let me ask you something here in the Peach State Classic. Can you eat a peach for hours, Jason? For hours? I could eat a few peaches for hours. Sure, you can do it. Just <laughs> eat it nice and slow, man, one bite at a time. All I think right. you got to specify on what type of peaches you were talking about here. All right. Cheese <laughs> rolls. One <laughs> bite at a time, buddy. One bite at a time. Sounds a little violent. <laughs> <laughs> So you see the choose here. There's a little bit of shuffling around, nothing too crazy. I, I think the guys have found that the high side, not that bad. So if they can just get up here and ride, you know, five or six uh, laps on that high side and find a home uh, down low, it's a net gain for them. Fresh tires, fresh right side tires. Starting P3, only 20 All laps right. on those tires. Travis Hoffler trying to make a statement here. Did the appropriate pit stop on the appropriate lap. He's got that chicken on the back. What does that remind you of, folks? I mean, it kind of reminds me of what's Kenny Rogers, was it? Stroker. Stroker Ace. That's it. Thank you. I need a little help up here. I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> Hacker fighting Hoffler, so... Hacker the champ. Hoffler trying to do something special here tonight. The champ, though, man, he, he's tough. Uh, I got to tell you. Yeah, and he's, he's, he's hungry. You know, he's been sitting back in the back of his field, you know, watching all these breaks happening, knowing that he's fast and that all he needed was probably a green flag run. So he's going to be hungry. He probably, he probably don't have a whole lot of patience here. So be expecting Brian Hacker to have to be a little more aggressive here and not be as patient. Beautiful sounds out here at Lanier tonight. These late models coming down to it. 16 to go. Out front, Guillaume Fortin leading. Needs a win. He's got a hacker, the points leader, back and forth. But Martin. And Curtis right here looking for a race win. Scott Austin back in fifth with Hoffler still stuck up on the high side. Yeah, I've been really impressed with uh, Martin's run tonight. Dude. He's really hung in there up there in the top three all night. Done a really good job. Yeah, got there. Philip Martin, you know, he, he led a few races earlier in the year. Maybe, you know, I don't know, two or three races and late got wrecked. But it, he just perseveres. And when you talk to him, he didn't have a bad attitude about it. It's just, yeah, that's just racing. And he carried on. And that attitude brought him to victory lane this year. And here he is again. I mean, this man has speed, doesn't he, Colin? Yeah, absolutely. And back to what you're saying about, you know, his, his kind of like memo. Uh, you know, racing happens. And even though you might lead all those laps and end up getting wrecked late, I mean, it's just part of it. And there's nothing you can control about it. And, you know, you saw, like, for example, at Myrtle Beach, I mean, he was doing amazing. And then just a little bit of bad fortune happened when we got wrecked out of the lead. 
but you didn't see him go and put the, put the car on a trailer. He kept running and kept learning, and then it fed on into a couple weeks later at Phoenix when he took the win. And um, I'm gonna ten to go, nine to go yep. here. And, and it all takes his confidence, and I think now that you have confidence in that 46, he's gonna be more even more dangerous. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we talk about it a lot. Confidence is a big thing, and you get up here and sniff around the top five first, and then you're second, and then you get maybe wrecked when you were going to win one, and then you finally win, and it just snowballs. And now it seems like nothing really can go wrong for him. I mean, he, he's riding up here all the time. He's not getting wrecked. Here comes Hacker. Oh, bad timing for Hacker. He was oh, no. ready to make a move. It's Loverridge around again. The pace car tries oh. to murder him there. That wasn't called for. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the like pace car. The lap before that had just scraped the wall in, in the entering <laughs> one, too, also. So here comes our lover ridge. He's got Schumann behind him. Schumann comes in and gives him the old hee ho there. I don't know if that's it's the not, old hee ho. Uh, I don't know if that's a real thing, but that's unfortunate back there in the back there. Those guys getting together here right at the end of the race while these guys are racing hard up front. It is, and and you know I, I don't like to call the people out, but you know it's something you don't like to see. You know the, the you're absolutely right, Jason. There's a you're at the back. You're your twentieth. You're lap down. Whatever. There's no need for it. So you know yeah, guys got to get better back there. Nobody's telling them not to race, but. You know, it's just some racing, uh, race craft there at the end of the race, you know, for 20th place. Of course, like I said, nobody's telling them not to race for position at all. Yeah, always hard. Uh, any position on the track. Race car drivers are going to race. It's in their blood. They can't help it. I mean, I've been, I remember being three or four laps down, and I got in between first and second one night, and I was so ticked off about being a lap down i raced them for a good 10 laps just out of spite <laughs> so you know race car drivers are fickle people yeah so that's then, right. i mean then you're seeing them obviously take the uh the choose rule here um you know we're seeing they're going to be going green on two laps to go here what, what are you thinking i mean if you take the high side here you can still salvage a good position here and you're not going to really lose a whole lot because there's not enough laps to really get past that off unless it's obviously... Well, here, here's another thing, crashed, too, Colin. I mean, we're likely to have another caution, so it's full send time. I mean, if you full send it and you're leading in the middle of the corner when the caution comes out, you might just steal this win away from 410. So one dive bomb on the high side, not a dive bomb, but a dive in. Here we go. 410, another great start. Curtis, not quite there. Maybe he is, and he does. He sends it in, and he sends oh, the 13 no. around. Cracks him, Hoffler around the high side. Martin down low. Spun. Traffer, spun. Travis Hoffler to the lead. Austin is there wrecking. wrecking, but my goodness. Up front, things have changed. Hacker somehow is involved back there. I don't know what's going on. Man, There's I never a lot thought to watch I, there. A lot to watch there. I, I thought I'd never see four wide here, but <laughs> hey. Let's have a look. Up front and then the checkup. Austin gets into hacker. And they check up there. See if we can get someone a little a little better in the action. Well, you see hacker there. But they're still kind of doing stuff up there. It looks like Nichols was playing kissy face with someone. Yeah, I mean, or that's not Nichols. I'm not sure who that was right there. I mean, it might have been Scott, Al Smith. Yeah, it was Al Smith. Scott Austin, Jeff Mathis, Matt Cook, Adam Gable, all these guys bumping and banging into this. And there was just things going on all over that lap. So mayhem will go green, white, checker. And now... Travis Hoffler with the fresh right sides he had on there. That's not the benefit that got him to the lead. It might have helped him get up here, but my goodness, him and Philip Martin, Fortin's got to be ticked off. He was shuffled out there, booted out of position. The chrome horn from the Murphy missile. Yeah, Travis Hoffler, I mean, we were earlier in the race, you know, he was always the one taking that high side on restarts and he even got freight train one time all the way back to 10th starting fourth 
but here he is back at it. You know, he, he ran that high line for a lot of these restarts recently, gaining slowly gaining positions just because of the tire difference. And then he just had a little bit of good fortune, but also the fact that his reaction time was so quick. It was in a blink of an eye, and, you know, he, he made that decision, and now he's in the lead, up 11 positions on the night, um, looking great and looking for a chance to s steal this win, honestly. And not only that, Colin, but so you got... Dante gets shuffled back. Hacker involved in that wreck gets shuffled back. Now, 410, the bad luck, he loses maybe a win here. But points-wise, uh, Hacker got the worst of it. So this is great news for 410, really. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And this is, and he's still got to salvage what he can now. I mean, he might not be winning this thing, but you are right about points. He wants to get every single point he can. Every, every little bit is an advantage. Here we go. Travis Hoffler takes the high side. What a move by the 20. Another brilliant move. What a watch. Martin trying to hold on, but Grosser goes drives right around him. Well, not quite yet. Big battle for second. Fortin right there looking for something. Hoffler on the white flag. The 20 comes through one and two. No problem for him. One more corner. It's going to be Travis Hoffler, winner here at the Peach State Classic. Behind them, they're beating and banging. It looks like Martin, no grosser, takes second. Martin third, Shepard fourth, and 410 falls to fifth position. Hacker ends up down in 16th, or points leader, and Curtis with an 18th place finish, a very unhappy 18th. Wow, Travis Hoffler, my goodness. That was great, boy. He had those right side tires. He just took the high lane. He knew he could lay down in the turn one and two right there at the end of that race and just took off. It just shows you that if he could have ever got to the bottom and close, those right side tires would have helped him. Yeah, he's got to be so happy right now. I mean, Colin, these things, more times than not, it's like 410. You got heartache. I mean, short track racing, you know, not for the faint of heart, but every once in a while, the gods gift you one here. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And, I mean, Hoffler obviously got a little bit of help here with the with Lady Luck. But, overall, I mean, Travis has just had a, a great night tonight. Doing stuff, doing differently is what he was doing tonight. He was doing everything that everybody wasn't. And so, like, taking tires and using the high lines. So, he put himself in that situation. So, overall, Hoffler just absolutely defined odds tonight. Doing an amazing job. And, honestly, well-deserved finish. Yeah, thrilling. And Justin Grosser is taking them tires too. He's up there, ended up with a P2. That was a good run. Yeah, great, great job for him and Martin. Uh, top three are all going to be very, very happy. Of course, we'll talk to them and we'll do that right after this message. We are going to see that man smile. It makes me smile. We all miss Dale Earnhardt Sr. out there. Those beautiful old cup cars but here Hoffler almost looking like Earnhardt at time but you know we got the chicken on the back I don't know <laughs> he looks like a happy chicken though I love that kind of stuff what a race here Colin yeah no doubt uh every single week I mean these guys just absolutely put on a show for us and tonight was definitely another one that was just great you know it's always these these late late lap carnages that we keep seeing and um, I always put on a show for us. So, uh, obviously another good night. Uh, looking forward to next week. Also, it's going to be also another good race. Uh, but overall, I mean, this is this is a little bit of a, a taste of the championship race that is coming up here in the next next couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Jason. You know, th this type of racing here. I mean, it can flip on its head. It's just it's a wild style. It's old school racing here. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's a lot of fun, and unfortunately it can be frustrating at times, but it's at times it can also be very rewar rewarding, and these guys were doing a great job at that tonight. Indeed they are, and Colin right now, I believe you're down there with third place finisher, uh, Philip Martin. Yeah, I'm here with third place finisher, Philip Martin. Um, <clears throat> overall, solid night for you, Philip. You know, you stayed pretty much within the top five almost the entire race and just kept it clean you know kind of a silent night for you you know not really getting into anything just running your line 
uh, had your passes here and there, but Philip, just walk us through, like, you know, what were you thinking? Uh, you saw these, you, I mean, see these two guys behind you of Hoffler and Grosser that are both all new tires. What was the difference? Just talk us through what was going on. I, I was hoping for a better restart. I just kind of got caught sleeping a little bit on that one. He got a good jump, and then it was the battle was on with Grosser, so he, uh, <laughs> he was he was tough on the high side, that's for sure. Yeah, no doubt. He was working it very well, and I mean, um, did you ever get a, really a taste of using that high line? Because, I mean, it really looked like Hoffler kind of just kind of figured it, Ho Hoffler and Grosser just kind of figured it out. You know, they kept trying that high side and got it to work. Was it something of them kind of like uh, pinching you down, or um, was it just that momentum that they were able to get off the corner? Uh, just the momentum. Uh, I was still pretty tight on the in the middle. I, I kind of hurt their right front there a little bit trying to get back to G, so uh yeah just hurt the right front a little bit but i'll take a i'll definitely take a quiet night nice little points night here and load up and go to the next one well sounds good philip uh is there any one you would like to thank any sponsors anybody you want to thank uh i definitely gotta thank dante curtis for the awesome paint job thing looks great uh well my engineering you guys for all the broadcasts every week in and out you know you guys do a great job everybody loves watching it uh all the guys coming out racing with us and all the admins putting in all the hard work too and you know we'll uh go on to next week sounds good congratulations philip thanks guys all right jason that's third place finisher philip martin yeah dan i'm here with uh justin grosser he's uh got a strong p2 finish he was ran p5 all night uh, then pitted lap 80 goes in right side tires. Justin, give us some info, man. What kind of strategy were you playing? Was that playing the whole time? Yeah. I mean, kind of like I talked about pre-race and the redraw. Um, I kind of knew that I didn't have the pace to run with these guys with hacker and Dustin and Phillip and, uh, Gyalm. I, I just knew that I was going to have to get off strategy if I wanted a, a, a chance at it. And you know, it, it's so different when you're, when you're points racing, you can't really afford to get off strategy. You kind of just got to take your cards as you get them. And, uh, you know, don't do anything crazy to cost yourself spots, uh, nothing too risky. But, uh, you know, when you just come in here and do these one-offs, it kind of opens up the playbook for um, changing things up, man. It was tough. I actually didn't even pit the first time by. Um, and that caution that I came to pit road, and, uh, I kind of second-guessed myself. But I was looking at how many cars were on lead lap. I saw 23 cars, and I was like, oh, God, no, I can't can't, can't give up fifth place for to start restart 23rd. But, um I just started thinking about it. I was like, well, I'm just going to run fifth if I don't do anything else. And eventually those new tires are going to be coming if we get some cautions. So I kind of just had to, uh, had to, had to, had to commit to something, uh, or just be content running fifth. So yeah, I see, it, uh, you see you, you restarted in 16th and, uh, what was your, what was your strategy and plan to work your way up front? Uh, go where they're not on the choose. Uh, honestly, just try to take the shortest lane. I'm kicking myself. There was one chance I had to take the outside and, uh, I think I lost a row at that point, maybe with 20 to go or something. But uh, got back on the outside of the next restart, missed some missed some wrecks. We were able to roll the top really good there and, uh, you know, really give it up to the guys on that were on the inside pinned down there. And they did a really good job on old tires of not yeah, well, uh, that was a really, us. That was a really great freaking run there. I mean, it was good to see and taking advantage of that choose rule. You know, that's a really smart good strategic play and just by, really by, paid off for you tonight Anybody by the way just, oh, go Jason, ahead, just let me hear but by the way i just want to let you know i called you out for that pit stop justin i was wrong oh yeah but i called you out nah, it feels good to prove someone wrong every now and that's then. it that's it <laughs> yeah it was i remember dean calling you out on it but it turned out to be a great strategy and got you up front is anybody you want to shout out sponsor you like to thank or anything while we got you uh, just all these admins here, uh, they do a great job, and um, their hard work is not unnoticed. Uh, everybody in North South Racing League, um, Jane G. Hardwood Flooring, uh, that's about it. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys for putting us on for uh, broadcasting. Yeah, well, great deal, man. Great finish, great strategy, some real smart racing, really paid off, Dean. Yes, sir. That was second place there, Justin Grosser, but I'm down here. With the man of the hour, the number 20, Travis Hoffler, down in victory lane. He might stay there all week, folks. Congratulations, Travis. 
Thank you. I'm going to set up a tent right here. You betcha, man. I'll come down and have one with you if you'll have me. Drama's got, a hell of a job, man. I got horseshoes down here. They're they're everywhere. Got lucky horseshoes everywhere. Well, a little bit, a little bit. We won't yeah. deny that. But also some great driving and some great strategy, right? You took your right sides out there. You're walking the high side. It's not easy up there. I mean, let's start at the end, actually. I want to go with that restart because you're the only guy who took the high side, and you took it at the end. What was your thinking there? To be honest, I was sleeping. I didn't realize we were choosing, and I was just high on the <laughs> on the track. So, but it worked out. I was able to get the jump and get the run down the down the front stretch and and stretch it out over, over uh, Philip and and clear him going into one. So it worked out. It worked out really good. All right, dreaming of victory up there, kind of missed the choose rule, but it worked out great, uh, Travis. So you're riding around in there. What, what when did you pit, and what made you come into pit road? What were you thinking? Uh, so when I jumped in the session today, I ran about 52 laps just straight, just as hard as I could to see where my tires stacked up towards the end of that run. And, um, they were, they fell off quite a bit. They didn't fall off too bad. And the left sides were really good. So I was like, you know what? Lap 70 something. That'll give me about 50 laps to go. I'm going to, I'm going to pit and, and see what happens and see if it plays out. And took my right sides and came back out and chose the top and was right back up there in the front and it all worked out from there. Man, did it. I mean, that little wreck there. So 410 gets nudged out, and you guys have to do evasive action. Philip, I believe, low, you high. You come around and snag the lead. Tell us a little bit about that little incident. Yeah, right. The, the, the high side saved me there. I was able just to keep it rolling and get around them before they all, you know, collected everybody. And I, it sounds like they kept it straight, but it was a matter of time. If I was any lower, I would have been collected, and it would have been a pile up. So the high side definitely saved me right there. Oh, man, this is just awesome, man. We were rooting for you. It's good to see you get up here and get one. I mean, these guys are tough out here, Travis. You got to, you know, savor every one of these. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Number two on the number two on the career in the NSRL, and hopefully, uh, hopefully a couple more follow. Man, I hope so, too. Congrats on this one. Look forward to seeing what you can do next week and the rest of the season. But, you know, really big congratulations. Uh, floor is yours, brother. Anybody you want to shout out? Yeah, shout out to you guys for, for broadcasting this every week. You know, it, you guys put on a great, great product, and I know the fans enjoy it um, at SRL for, for keeping this league the way it is for, for the last, I think, eight seasons, nine seasons, whatever it is. Um, all the guys we race in week in and week out, you know, it's – it's very good, solid racing through everybody. You know, there's no, there's not too many of the, the bump and runs, I should say. Uh, we saw a little bit of one tonight, but you know that happens. But uh, now that's about it. You know, it's just, just a good group of guys. All right. Well, we, uh, from our standpoint, appreciate those kind words. Colin Travis Hoffler up in victory lane, just thrilled. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, and he had a great <laughs> night uh, tonight. Just you know doing what he can with what he had. And I think it's funny he actually fell asleep on the choose rule. Uh, it worked out for him, man, because he had a beautiful run going into turn one and just drove away after that with that with that gap he had already built. But um, looking on the next week, we're looking at New Smyrna. This is a pretty good little track for uh, these late models. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Nashville Fairground Speedway. Uh, just kind of a half mile that's got a good amount of banking that's narrow and it's 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 pretty it's a pretty good passing track um so looking forward to next week this is gonna it's gonna be another big night for these guys that are fighting for points um interesting it's interesting to see what brian hacker has in store you know he didn't have a a career night tonight but um he's gonna have to have one definitely in then the next race to keep this points lead I'll tell you what, Jason, Hoffler might just set the world record for a straight burnout. This is impressive here. Yeah, it sure was. That's a hell of a burnout he's got going on. Good to show it. Good to see it. It really is. I mean, he's leaving tar in the straightest line I ever did see. What a night for the 20. Great night of racing here, as always. Of course, we'll have all their racing action each and every week. The North-South Racing League, Monday, 9 p.m. Come check us out. But for myself, Dean Doucette, for Colin J. Kennedy, Mr. Jason Martin, that's going to wrap it up from Lanier. And we'll see you right here.